My name is Matt Fleetwood, and I'm a PhD candidate in Dr. Shishong's turf grass lab here at the University of Missouri. And today, I will be discussing how to improve water retention in hydrophobic soils. Here, we are standing on a typical USGA putting green at our turf grass research farm, where the presence and effects of soil water repellency or soil hydrophobicity can clearly be seen. Soil water repellency are hydrophobic coatings or waxy organic matter that attach to the outside of soil particles, reducing the soil's ability to wet or retain water, and especially on these USGA sand-based putting greens. However, soil water repellency can be found in all soil types across the world, such as agriculture fields, pastures, forests, and grasslands. But due to the relatively low surface area sand has compared to silt and clay, soil water repellency is more prone to develop in these sandy soil types. The technical definition of soil water repellency or soil hydrophobicity is a water repellent surface that when in contact with water repels it into individual droplets and thus inhibits the water infiltration into a porous media. As you can see in this image, the front half of our putting green is showing the classic symptoms of a localized dry spot, which is due to the soil water repellency underneath in the sand base root zone. This is because wetting agent was withheld from this portion of the green. As compared to the back half of the green, which had multiple wetting agent applications to eliminate the formation of localized dry spot. It is very easy to see the early signs of localized dry spot on your green or even when localized dry spot is present in the early morning hours based on the dew onset. Areas that lack dew are most likely more dry and could be the early signs of localized dry spot. Soil water repellency leads to issues other than localized dry spot. This was taken a few minutes after lightly irrigating the green. However, the water stays on top of the surface due to the underlying soil water repellency. This image displays reduced infiltration, increased runoff, and directly reducing the plant available water. This next image shows a reduction in irrigation efficiency, potential leaching of pesticides and fertilizers from the soil, and directly impacts the turf quality and playability of the green. As you can imagine, a golf course superintendent would be very concerned with both of these images as they are not ideal for play or visual appeal. To show how water moves through a water repellent soil, we call this preferential flow, which is water seeking the least resistant route through the soil, bypassing the water repellent areas and forming these finger-like channels through the soil. This leads to portions of the surface soil having limited water for the grass above, which ultimately forms localized dry spot and secondly, allows pesticides and fertilizers to move more quickly through the soil and get into the groundwater. To clearly understand why this occurs, we need to understand some slightly technical aspects first. First, wettability. The wettability of a surface is when you place a drop of liquid on a solid surface and how it adheres to the surface determines the wettability between that liquid and the solid. In the left image, when the droplet forms more of a ball shape on the surface, depicted on the left, it means that the contact angle from the surface to the outside of the droplet is higher, equating to a lower wettability. In contrast, when the droplet spreads out more evenly on the surface, depicted on the right, it will have a lower contact angle and equates to a higher wettability. This is also seen in the two images on the right. When there is low wettability, the water flows in a preferential flow fashion. Compared to when there is high wettability, the droplet flows more evenly through the soil profile. Now, you may wonder, what causes the water droplet to just not spread out evenly on the solid surface? Why does it ball up sometimes? This all relates back to the chemical structure of water, which many know is two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. The configuration also leads to the water molecule being what we call a polar molecule, meaning that the molecule has either a positive or negative electrical potential associated with it. Because of that electrical potential, it leads to having a strong attraction with other molecules around it. In this case, water molecules are very strongly attracted to each other and they form bonds together, which we call hydrogen bonds. This attraction of water molecules to each other leads into why the water droplet maintains its sphere shape on certain solid surfaces. Moving into another concept, which is why wetting certain soils is fairly difficult. This concept is surface tension. Surface tension is the tension held between the liquid molecules at the outer liquid air interface layer caused by the attraction of molecules within the bulk liquid of the droplet, in this case the strong hydrogen bond attraction. Essentially, because there are no other water molecules outside the edge of the droplet, the attraction from the water molecules within the droplet is so strong that they are pulling the outer layer of molecules in towards them, causing the classic sphere droplet shape to form. The water molecules are more attracted to themselves than the solid surface. 
This is why you can sometimes see insects floating or skating across a lake or river surface, because the surface tension of the water is so strong that the insect cannot break the attraction and end up floating on top of the water. Understanding those concepts we discussed based upon the water and the attraction to itself, we can discuss the other piece which is the soil, or in our case the sand-based root zone, which can develop hydrophobicity around the soil particles and naturally deter water from attaching. This is an image of a core taken from a water repellent section of our USGA sand base screen. As you can see, we are performing what is called a water droplet test to determine how repellent the soil is to water. Here you place droplets on the soil surface and time how quickly they penetrate. Depending on how long it takes the droplet to penetrate, that correlates to the severity of water repellency in the soil. The chart from the GCSAA in the bottom right hand corner is the scale on which this is based. Note the different contact angles or wettability of the droplets as you move deeper in the soil core. As you can see, soil water repellency is more of a surface issue and why the droplets contact angle is greater towards the top. Based on various studies, it's been shown that a sand-based green can develop water repellency in as little or quickly as six months after construction of a USGA green and therefore lead to localized dry spot, as partially seen here. It takes as little as 3 to 6 percent hydrophobic sand in a root zone soil mix to cause a water repellency or wetting issue. This is due to the decomposition of organic matter which can come from various sources such as plant debris decomposition, root and fungal exudates, or organic materials such as peat moss. The decomposition of organic matter becomes complex organic acids that coat the sand particle forming a water repellent layer around the sand and change the sand particle from wettable to a non-wettable media. Therefore, development of soil water repellency is an inevitable situation that needs to be dealt with. This is an image taken by a scanning electron microscope of a fresh sand grain, which had never been used in a putting green soil. As you can see, the surface is very smooth with little to no organic molecules coating the surface. Compared to this skinny electron microscope image of a sand particle that was collected from our hydrophobic research putting green, this is a hydrophobic sand particle that fell into the severe category of the water droplet penetration test, which equated to more than 40 minutes before a single water droplet penetrated the soil core. So to solve this issue, you can obviously aerify and top dress your green to try to remove some of these hydrophobic sand particles and introduce new fresh sand. But as we stated earlier, only 3 to 6% of hydrophobic sand in your root zone can cause soil water repellency. So your options are either reducing the surface tension of water or improving the surface tension of the soil. This is why your first and easiest strategy to overcome soil water repellency should be wetting agents. So what is a wetting agent? It is defined as a compound that causes a liquid to spread across or penetrate more easily into a solid surface by reducing the surface tension of the liquid. They are amphiphilic compounds, which means that they have a polar or hydrophilic water-loving head region and a non-polar or hydrophobic water-repelling tail made up of carbons, which is depicted on the left. The diagram on the right shows how they relieve soil water repellency in soils by attaching their hydrophobic tail portions onto the hydrophobic organic coatings on the outside of the sand particle protruding into the soil pores. This leaves the hydrophilic water-loving head portion sticking out into the soil pore, attracting water as it moves through the pore. This process changes the once non-wettable sand particle into a wettable sand particle. So the question we are always asked is, are all wetting agents the same? The simple answer to this question is no, not all wetting agents are made the same. Their performance can greatly vary based on their molecular weight, their size, shape, and structure. In this image, there are three wetting agents that were tested and a control. From left to right, you can see that the A and B wetting agents performed well in controlling the localized dry spot. However, C's plot looks very similar and potentially even worse than the untreated plot to its left. Here is a video showing small jars filled with either fresh sand on the left or hydrophobic sand created in the lab on the right. As you can see, the water immediately penetrates into the fresh sand but sits on top of the hydrophobic sand. Then two different wetting agents are added to the jars on the right. Wetting agent 1 takes a longer time to start allowing the water to penetrate into the hydrophobic sand. Unlike wetting agent 2, which immediately allows the water to penetrate into the hydrophobic sand, visibly showing the difference between wetting agents. So to test these differences between wetting agents, we started out by analyzing over 40 plus wetting agents at five rates based upon the label rate to determine the different wetting agents effect on surface tension. 
We did this by utilizing an attention theta light tensiometer, pictured on the left, and analyzing the droplets of different solutions, shown on the right. Based on the data collected, we created this chart of 20 plus different wetting agent solutions and the resulting surface tension. As a reference point, the surface tension of water is 72 millinewtons per meter, so all of the wetting agent solutions significantly reduce the surface tension of just tap water alone. What we saw from this graph are three defined groups, which are potentially some that better infiltrating, some that could have dual purpose, and some that are potential better water retainers. But you can clearly see the separation between the wetting agent solutions. But how does this relate to water retention? So based on the surface tension data collected, we wanted to test the concept of plant available water and the different effects wetting agents could have on fuel capacity and permanent wilting point of the soil. Fuel capacity is the water available in the soil for plants to grow, while permanent wilting point is when the water is held too tightly in the soil micropores and cannot be accessed or taken up by plant roots. Plant available water is the difference between fuel capacity and plant permanent wilting point. We worked with Dr. Steven Anderson in our soils lab to utilize his pressure chambers to apply different pressures on soils treated with these various wetting agents. The pressures applied in these chambers mimic the suction power a soil might have on water, which can be up to 15 times the atmospheric pressure. This is a graph showing the data we collected from the pressure chambers mimicking field capacity. As you can see, there are vast differences in wetting agents' abilities to hold water in the soil at different pressures. If we were able to match up the surface tension data, you would notice that it follows closely to our hypothesis that wetting agents with higher surface tensions can hold more water in soils and wetting agents with lower surface tensions hold less water in soils under different pressures. This data is permanent wilting point. Displaying wetting agents with higher values showed an ability to hold onto more water and potentially allow the plants to access water under harsh conditions, where the lower values would have a low volumetric water content causing severe drought in the green. Lastly, this displays plant available water, and we can again break this data into three classes we determined based upon the surface tension values. This demonstrates a significant difference in various wetting agents' abilities to influence the amount of water available to the plant. So in conclusion, soil hydrophobicity is an inevitable issue that will occur on your USGA sand-based putting green, and knowing how to deal with it is crucial. Not all wetting agents are made or perform the same, and it is also important to understand your putting green needs, your soil properties, and the wetting agent you are applying to utilize them properly and effectively. Dr. Shong and I would like to thank our funding agents, the USGA and the GCSAA, in aiding us in completing many different studies we've performed around wetting agents. Thank you, and good luck maintaining your putting greens.